to the announcements. I am live with a life. We're celebrating day three of the Falling into East Challenge. Today is a day all about coaching. The first day we really looked at what ease might be. I'm here. We're flying out um, today from Arkansas. We're in the Little Rock Airport, but we're flying out today. Um, headed to Phoenix for the next four or five or six months. We're not sure how long we're going to be there. So <clears throat> anyway, we're falling into ease. This is day three. The first day we looked at what ease is. The second day we did some clearing. We did some deep clearing. If you didn't watch the video for day two, you might want to go do that. It's on my feed. It's also in our group, Falling Into Ease Facebook group. Today is day three. Today is about coaching. The quote for today is from the chapter in the midst of life and the thing that we're going to really talk about is the idea of ease in the midst of life ease in the midst of challenge when you're in a really tough moment and I hope that you aren't but it's likely that some of you are how do we find ease there I shared in the um, email today about a time that I that I was um, struggling but I'm going to share another one because I think it's really important I'm learning um, to um, share more of my journey and uh, many years ago many years ago now I was uh, raising a teenage boy who's now uh, quite uh, grown up and quite healthy and quite stable and quite secure and quite productive in the world he's a wonderful wonderful man now at this point but many years ago that was not the case Many years ago, he had a foray into his um, teenage experiences, and it included a court order, it included some uh, drug treatment things, it included um, all kinds of really, really horrendous as a mother moments. And I know some of you are dealing with kids or relatives who are having drug problems, and um, one particularly oh, horrendous moment we had put him into a um, inpatient treatment center. He was only like 14 years old or something like this at the time, maybe 15 by then. And it was in uh, downtown of the city we were in at that time. And I got a call late one night. And I'm a minister in a little church, so Saturday nights are like sacred. And I, you know, spend time getting ready for my talks. And I do a lot of meditation. I really get centered, especially when life is tough, right? So I'd gone to bed. It was like 11 o'clock on a Saturday night and I get a call and it was this inpatient treatment center they said we're sorry to tell you this but your son just left he ran I'm like you got to be kidding me you have got to be kidding me that was a scary scary part of the town it was absolutely horrifying to me I called the police they're like oh yeah okay we'll put him on the runaway list I said won't you go look for him no nope. no nope, there's too many of them we won't do that it was days it was days I, I don't remember now how long, it felt like a year, but it was probably five or six days that he was out on the streets, just a kid. We did find out he was with two other um, patients, whatever you call them, another young man about his age and a young woman. And we saw the young woman on the news because she had been um, picked up by somebody and um, horribly abused and it was a nightmare. Oh, I can, can you feel my... Oh, just talking about this, it's just making me crazy right now. There was no way in the world I was going to be able to fall into ease around that. But what I did do, what I did have, is a support system. I remember calling my friend Gregory, and he held my hand <clears throat> through all of it. My husband at the time was fabulous through all of it. It was, I had such a support system around me. And what they kept saying was, you have to let go. I'm like, I can't let go. I cannot let go. This thing has me so tight, so wound up that I couldn't even hardly breathe. And they kept coaching me. They kept holding space for me. They kept encouraging me. My friends, uh, my prayer partners, Gregory and and um, other other close friends of mine at the time were just like holding this space. They were just like cradling me in this in in place where I could breathe 
And I was able eventually to really start to breathe a little bit, to really turn him over to spirit. Of course I was worried sick, of course I was terrified, of course I had guilt and shame and rage and betrayal and all kinds of emotions going. What ended up happening four or five days later is somebody had seen him. Somebody found out. He'd ended up making his way to a friend's house and so they let me know. Um, and I was able to go and get him and that started a whole nother process. But what I want you to know is that if you're really struggling, if you're seriously struggling and finding ease, get support. Get support. There's lots and lots of ways to do get, to get support. If you don't know how to get support, then just message me and I'll be there with you to find support. But the other thing that I want to really talk about, and I'm not really talking about it, but really is...